Ben, I want to ask you uh, a bit about um, this issue of pseudo progression. Yeah. It's a relatively new concept yeah. in uh, at least thoracic oncology. Right. Certainly very familiar to our melanoma right. uh, investigator colleagues, but uh, and that we haven't really Rapid grasped. Right. Completely. And this whole concept of pseudo progression, especially uh, with patients who are treated with immunotherapeutic, is interesting. I'm not uh, sure that it's uh, clear yet what uh, causes the pseudo progression. Is it the fact that these um, therapies take time to work and it's just the tumor growing, or is it infiltration of, of tumor cells and subsequent edema into the tumor uh, based on the drug that you're giving? Uh, so, uh, in these studies, uh, some of uh, you know it looks like there may be some tumor growth initially with the, uh, with the delivery of these drugs. And the question is, should we consider that progressive disease? And should we abandon the therapy that we've initially given, the immunotherapeutic approach, um, based on the fact that these, these patients uh, may have initial uh, uh, tumor growth? I think most of the studies at least allow right. some degree of growth. And right. it, frankly, allow you to continue the patient mm -hmm. if they're not symptomatically worse and I think uh, that, on study for at least some period. Yeah, I think this is an idea put forth by uh, Jed Wolchuk and his experience with ipilimumab and melanoma, uh, this whole concept of immune-related response rather than traditional response. Should we be using uh, immune-related response criteria, which factors in some of these new lesions or potential pseudoprogression and not consider those patients uh, technically progressive disease so that they can remain so on therapy? At what point do you declare true progression? I think that's difficult. I think in our, our own experience uh, with nivolumab, uh, we've seen some small growths and kept these patients on the drug, and they've had durable responses. So I don't think that it's a difficult question. Were the responses seen typically at the four-month mark or six-month mark, or is it variable? You know, with nivolumab, and this has been mirrored in the data that was presented at World Lung, and 50% of the responses were seen uh, within the first eight weeks, and that's what we've seen. So it's a patients. typical agent in that regard. Right. Usually, <laughs> exactly. if they're going to respond, they will right. respond. The, right. within that first But I think every patient's window. different. I think we've had some patients who've, who've responded right away. Uh, I think we've had others who will have some pseudoprogression and growth, but then will have durable responses after, after uh, administration of the drug for but a long this time. This is nothing new for us in thoracic oncology, though. We had the same situation with crizotinib. Read carefully the uh, papers that got that drug approved. People were allowed to stay on that drug when the doc declared clinical benefit. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about. If you see the patient benefiting regardless of what the resist read is, you continue that patient. And we're used to doing that already. And we figured that out for Chris, we'll figure it out here too. Please remember, resist has nothing to do with deciding whether or not to continue Mrs. Jones's treatment, unless Mrs. Jones is on a clinical trial. But it's an alteration from our traditional paradigm. Yeah, but we're, it's a bastardization though of what resist is. Resist is something for <laughs> clinical trials. It's not how we decide to treat a human oh, being right. with an I illness. I think it points out the flaws yeah. of resist in this setting. Yeah. Well, but and, the melanoma people work this out, and we can do the same. And I mean, and I think with the, the pseudo progression, I mean, the the slide sets that we, you know, I haven't personally had a patient on nivolumab, but I've talked a lot with Julie Bramer. I've seen her, you know, she's got some beautiful pictures of patients where, you know, if I had not seen the patient, I had just seen scan A to scan B, which was sort of the eight-week scan, Declare clearly PD looked like it stop, was bigger. Right. You know, it wasn't just a little bit of growth, it was a lot of growth. And yet that same patient, two months later, is starting to shrink, and these are some of the patients who've had the longest-term responses. So I think it's a little bit different. I mean, I've treated a lot of patients with crizotinib, I've never seen something where it's really, really small <coughs> and then shrunk later. I've certainly had patients where clinically they're better, some of the lesions look not a lot better, but the patient looks better and we keep going, but it's different. You know, my point is the 21% growth on crizotinib in somebody who's at work full time, you're not gonna stop that drug. No, but that's not that's, what some that's of the- That's my point, right, that's but, what this is too. But some of the pseudoprogression pictures are definitely, you know, they're doubling of some of the tumors. It's resist progression. So, but you know what I'm saying, be a doc. <clears throat> sort of the bottom right. line. The traditional paradigm that mm -hmm. we've applied for the last 20 years mm -hmm. in clinical trials of conventional cytotoxics fall by the wayside. But I think it's important to note too that for some of the trials that are ongoing with some of these compounds, there are exclusions for patients who have lesions that if they were to grow could cause problems, things that are nailed to cord, right? And that's not a usual exclusion when we're dealing with a cytotoxic drug it's being the or doc. even the targeted agents. <laughs> Heather, some of the original trials um, mm -hmm. suggested a preferential benefit in squamous cell, and you pointed this out yourself. Um, has that really held up, or um, is, is that a consistent theme? I think it's a consistent theme. 
What does it mean as the drugs are developed and we're trying to figure out who should get the treatment or not? I'm not sure we know that. You know, if you look across the board, some of the trials clearly have higher response rates in squamous patients and others, and not just one comment, it's, it's several of them. Um, but the response rates in the non-squamous are not nothing. You know, they're oftentimes still in the teens, even 20s. And so I think it's too early to exclude based on histology. Perhaps there's going to be a connection between the true biomarker. Probably that's going to be PDL1 by some assay, though I don't think we've developed the right assay yet. Um, and then the histology will just be a secondary thing. Um, however, it's great to see that we're in a, you know, with a class of agents where squames are no longer sort of the less likely to work. They're a lot in the of us at least, consider if squames, not better. Uh, the orphan uh, right. uh, disease, at least in non-small right. cell, considering the lack, uh, mm -hmm. the, the fact that Pemetrex and Bevacizumab really don't right. uh, apply to that population. It, it's also interesting I, that some of the um, <coughs> trials are focused yeah. only in the squamous patients already. And so again, it's a matter of how quickly do you leap to the subpopulations and their pros, as we've heard already, thinking, okay, well, how do we most quickly get this drug to a point where it's available to more patients? We certainly leap to the subpopulation with the CTLA-4 right. inhibitor. The uh, ongoing phase three mm -hmm. is uh, testing exclusively in right. squamous. But it just, it's a, really, that's an important question, is how quickly do you make the leap to narrow mm -hmm. um, before you realize, you know, how to, to narrow? Are you excluding patients who would benefit, or are you treating too many patients who aren't benefiting, and how do you draw that line? And I, I don't think it's an easy answer. And I think that was the debate we had earlier about the PDL1. I think it's the same with the histology.